and welcome back to Big Fish Little Fish Aquatics. So today we're talking about how you maintain your general hardness or carbonate hardness in your aquarium. Now if you're new to fish keeping I've already done a video that covers the basic understanding of GH, KH and pH and I'll link that video in the top right corner of your screen. Make sure you watch that and then come back here. So let's start with your general hardness. Depending on how you run your aquarium the way GH is added will be different. If you're using tap water then you can roughly assume that GH minerals will be dissolved within that water and you'll find that by performing a regular water change that will help replenish your GH levels, in most cases. One tip however though, it's a good idea to test your water supply for specific calcium and magnesium ions, as most GH test kits actually test just GH as a whole rather than focusing on the individual calcium and magnesium content. And the reason you want to do this is you could come into problems where your GH it looks like it should be fine in terms of parts per million or degrees. However, you could have, for an example, a surplus of magnesium and very little calcium. And if you have shrimp or snails in your aquarium, this will greatly affect how their shells develop. It will affect shrimp molting and also cause many other health problems for your fish and your plants too. So assuming that you have the right levels for the species of fish you are planning to keep, there will be little effort needed on your part. Just keep up on those water changes and test the levels of the aquarium once per month. Or if you notice your inhabitants acting lethargic or sick. Again with the testing, I say once per month, but you will get used to how and when you need to check on your aquarium. You'll get into a routine, so that may need, you may need to you may be able to relax that later on, but start off with once per month. If however though you're actually wanting to increase your GH levels above what your tap water is, then two products I'd recommend would be Seachem Replenish and you'd use this for non-planted aquariums or you could use Seachem Equilibrium which is used for planted aquariums. What you're going to want to do is slowly increase your GH levels as you provide your water changes and this should reduce the stress on your fish. If you're wanting to lower your tap water's GH level then the only guaranteed effective way that I know of is by the use of cutting your tap water with RO water. Now RO stands for reverse osmosis and it's a filtering process that strips all of the minerals and solids out of your tap water so that it is pure. An example would be if you have say 10 litres of a tap water in your water change and you get rid of 2 litres of that tap water and replace that with 2 litres of pure RO, that should reduce your general hardness by 20% for that particular water change. A word of caution however, this will also reduce your other parameters too so this approach shouldn't be taken lightly. My advice is to either only keep fish that can thrive in your tap water's parameters or invest fully in reverse osmosis and then remineralize using the products I mentioned earlier to your desired levels. Now with KH you're going to want to follow a similar approach to general hardness. Your tap water should have some KH dissolved within it and assuming your tap water levels are right for your fish a weekly water change should help to replenish your KH. Ensuring a good gravel vac will help to remove any fish waste or uneaten food that, if left, would actually break down and create acids that would affect your KH levels. It is worth being aware that there are many things that you could add to your aquarium which would lower your KH, such as things that release tannins like driftwood or botanicals such as almond leaves. Some substrates also have this effect, so keep this in mind when maintaining your KH levels. Now, if you're actually wanting to increase your KH above what your tap water is, there are several effective ways. Crushed coral can be added to the substrate or in a bag in your filter. And the way this works is by when the acids are formed in your aquarium, they will react with the crushed coral, which will then release carbonate and calcium. The carbonates will increase your KH and as a side effect, obviously the calcium will raise your general hardness, so keep that in mind. The safe and reassuring thing about crushed coral is that as your pH rises, due to your KH rising, your water will become less acidic, and that will mean it was releasing less acid which will react with the crushed coral, and then all will eventually equalize. You can also use things such as alkalinity buffers, like the CKM alkalinity buffer, and whilst performing water changes, to slowly increase your KH level similar to what you would do with GH. Now when it comes to lowering KH, similar again to how you would with GH, 
Cutting with RO is an effective way of reducing pH levels during a water change. You can also use things such as acid buffers, like the Seachem acid buffer. However, the way these buffers reduce KH is by converting the KH into CO2. So primarily used in planted tanks that will consume the excess CO2 which is produced. As with any parameters, go slow with when increasing or decreasing KH. As too much CO2 can be dangerous to your fish and the pH swings will also stress them. And again, as with GH, my recommendation is to keep fish that will thrive in your water parameters or invest in RODI and remineralize to the correct levels. As a general rule, good maintenance will help the aquarium maintain appropriate GH and KH levels. Testing once per month as you start out and then as you get the hang of the things, maybe decreasing into what, what works for you. If you have any questions, please drop them below and I'll get back to you. Don't forget to like, subscribe, and I'll see you in the next one.